um, on behalf of the Community Education Task Force. I want to say good morning and thank everybody for coming today. Um, we're assembled here to voice our concerns regarding the overall state of the Rochester City School District and specifically the process of selecting and retaining the next superintendent of schools. We're not here to badmouth outgoing Superintendent Brazar. We wish him well in fact and hope that his efforts will yield a better result in Chicago than they did for he us here in Rochester. We are here today as parents, grandparents, friends, community members, and educators to um, voice our collective, let our collective voice be heard regarding the immediate needs of the city school district and to express our willingness to help build a strong and stable school district in the near future. We recognize the top leadership vacancy is one that must immediately be, be filled. We are adamantly opposed to filling this position with any candidate outside the Greater Rochester community. <clears throat> we have repeatedly seen the Board of Education hire superintendents from outside of our community with little or no success, cooperation, or longevity. The Democrat Chronicle reported yesterday in an article that the board met in executive session to discuss the contract and how to find a new superintendent. It was noted in that article that the board will likely conduct a national search for a new leader, a process that Malik Evans, board president, said could take over a year and cost over $100,000. With the district facing an $80 million budget deficit, we feel that uh, this expense is both unnecessary and irresponsible. Given the seriousness of widespread dissatisfaction with departing superintendent's agenda and results, the current school board leadership who are legally responsible for filling the interim and permanent positions, we would do well to seek real, meaningful parent and community input. With regards to superintendent and search and recruitment, the Rochester Board of Education policy allows for such community input. The policy clearly states that the board may also seek the advice and counsel of interested individuals with regards to the appointment of a superintendent. Therefore, as concerned parents, grandparents, educators, and taxpaying citizens, we exert our right to be a part of the process of determining who the next superintendent will be. As it relates to becoming a partner in selecting the new superintendent, we are requesting an immediate joint meeting with all board commissioners to begin the process of establishing this search committee. We believe our next superintendent must be a local candidate and possess the following skills. He or she must be an experienced master teacher with extensive instructional knowledge and a keen understanding of instructional practice. He or she must possess the ability to build a consensus with educators and with labor. He or she must be accessible with a demonstrated ability to work in partnership with diverse groups of urban parents. He or she must demonstrate unquestionable integrity and be trustworthy, honest, and deliver open and frequent communication with the community. And finally, he or she must represent the needs of all city school district students and families and subscribe to democratic principles and be opposed to corporate agendas and mayoral control ideologies. In closing, we want to work collaboratively with the process of selecting our next superintendent. We now assert our voice as a group by calling for a seat at the table when this decision will be made. My name is Dan Dermasich. I'm uh, the chairman of the Coalition for Justice in Education, formerly known as the uh, Coalition for Common Sense in Education. Superintendent Brazard's resignation presents the Rochester community not only the opportunity to have significant participation in the superintendent's search and selection process, but also the opportunity to base their selection of the new superintendent on criteria that will help guarantee our students a just and meaningful education. The implementation of the standardization education reform movement and the intensification of it through corporate design strategies under Superintendent Brazard has produced little, if any, significant success for Rochester students. It has not increased overall student learning nor closed the gap for poor and minority students. It has not prepared our students to earn diplomas for college, citizenship, or the workplace. It has not significantly reduced the dropout rate. It has not attracted nor retained more highly qualified teachers. And it hasn't improved the professionalism of teachers and administrators. Superintendent Brazard's resignation and results gives Rochester the opportunity to find a superintendent who has the courage and the sense of moral justice to advocate and create educational reform plans 
that one, address the issues of concentrated poverty and racial segregation. Two, address the lack of curriculum that prepares students to live effectively in the 21st century as responsible citizens and as college students or for a career. Three, address the obsession of our system with high stakes standardized tests which are neither valid nor reliable and narrow our students' curriculum. And four, turn our schools into places that celebrate the joy of learning. We need a superintendent who has the courage to address these issues with our city, with suburban leaders, with our New York State legislators, and the power structure in Rochester. Not blindly follow the agendas of corporate leaders like Eli Broad and Bill Gates. classroom assignment on Bikers Island Jail in New York City. My work in New York City taught me a great deal and led me to my role here in Rochester. This came, you know, I have met amazing teachers, principals, board members, and leaders in our community here who truly understand that education is a civil rights issue of the 21st century. I've worked hard these last three and a half years, recruiting the best and brightest in our community and some of our state to help us move student achievement. These people are unsung heroes in our district. Often their efforts go unrecognized. I've come to love this city, its children, its generosity. Brooke and I came here as an engaged couple, but I've since been married, built a home, and grown our family and friendships here in Rochester. This city has had a profound impact on our lives, both personally and professionally. I am a reformer. I make no excuses for the challenges we face and the resistance that comes when you take the steps necessary to produce dramatic and necessary change. But there is no denying that we've seen change here in Rochester. I want to celebrate these successes because ours is a fight to save this generation and those that will follow. While the leader in any movement is critically important, the work must ultimately become personal neutral. The work of the RCSD is not about a particular individual, it is about our children and the health of our city. I understand the politics of my position and I've worked over the past three years to build sustainability in our work. There is incredible talent and capacity in our district office and in our schools. I believe that this district and city have seen the tipping point and that there is unwavering commitment by a huge portion of the community to stay child focused and make the difficult decisions that will produce sustainable change for our children. I'm extremely grateful for the support you have given me and my family. Thank you. We, I talked to Malik three times before that message. So it wasn't just a text message. We actually spoke in person and last over the phone on Saturday as I was driving back from Maryland for nearly a half hour on the phone. So why would you, why would you say that you're going to I don't, I've not seen that news report, honestly, and I've not heard that. Um, so we are not talk about that. This morning we met again uh, for breakfast at about 6 or this morning for about an hour. So you're saying you have to more forms of your plan I didn't tell the board where this was going to happen, but we talked about the transition plan. As uh, what the board with Malik Evans specifically, we didn't ask Malik about board with Malik Evans, and I talked more than twice. A lot of people think that you're bailing on this district, especially after you decide a new contract back in November. Any comment on that? No, you know, um, when I signed my contract, there was no plan on, on transitioning. Uh, there, was never, there was no intent. Uh, I came in to do a job. Uh, but always understood that, you know, it would not be forever. Um, and three and a half years ago, I said that I would say as long as it makes sense for my family and myself, as long as it makes sense for the city of Rochester. And I think about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, I was on XXI with um, um, Judy Phillips talking about, you know, it may be time to begin to look at uh, maybe transition. But throughout the work for three and a half years, we look at sustainability, making sure that what we do was sustained. You look at this team, 
uh, we have an incredible talent here. And, and the work really has been about making sure that there is capacity, we build capacity, the work continues. Uh, because we look at the politics of the superintendent. Uh, you know, the average tenure across the country, unfortunately, is about 18 months. I think it's gone up to 2.3 years. Um, all of us want to see that to be, to be longer. I'm on the executive committee of ASA. We talk about it on a regular basis. But the work has been about building sustainability and making sure that the work continues. Mr. Brizard, in terms of the relationship with the board, oh. which you have admitted has certainly been contentious at times, and the recent no confidence vote, how much were those factors in your deciding to leave? You know, there are uh, five board members I get along with quite well, and, and sometimes six. Um, um, and I have a very good relationship with my board. Uh, despite what you see, you've never seen me argue with them in public, um, at board meetings, etc. And they've been very supportive. None of what we've done over the past three and a half years would have been able to be done without their support. I want to be clear about by saying that. We don't always agree, um, but I've understood uh, throughout the time that they are my bosses. Uh, we argue behind closed doors, which is what we do as a team, even our own team. Once we go out, we have a united front. Same thing I've done with my board as well. So, um, Chicago was an amazing opportunity for my family as well. Uh, Rush, Rush is a wonderful city, so is Chicago. Um, but it came time when we got to take a look at the fact that I was becoming a lightning rod for, for wonderful work that had to continue. Uh, and you look at the opportunity being presented to you. And again, never went out to look for another opportunity. Uh, it came uh, in one we actually, my family and I seized. My wife and I spent quite a bit of nights talking about uh, whether or not we should pursue, we should look at this, etc. It would be a decision as a family uh, to move forward. Not about the city of Rochester, uh, not about what again, not one criteria, but a lot of different things that we looked over in, in making that decision. One that did not come very lightly. But that no Mr. confidence Mr. Bizarre, you're not the first person, the first superintendent, that when the tough guy go, gets going, the superintendent gets going. Uh, you know, did you sign this contract, the extension in November, with the idea that it was only until something better came along? Mm -hmm. That has never been, that part is no. Um, I've, I've had offers be made to me in the past. Um, I've had headhunters talk to me as far as two years ago. Uh, so I've had other opportunities to, to move, and I've not done that. Um, if I was looking for an easier assignment, uh, I certainly would not be going to the third largest city in the country uh, with challenges as well. So but it is mayoral control, which is the system you came from. You know, um, I also worked in New York under board control. Um, so it's never been about, about mayoral control. Um, many of us who are in the seat of the local governance, uh, and not just the structure of the governance. You look for board support, you look for, for if it's a mayor, mayoral support. Coming to Rochester, one of the first questions I asked the person who was including me was to talk to me about the seven member board in Rochester. That was important for me. Uh, the same way any of us, when you interview for a job, you interview your boss the same way they're interviewing you. Um, so we did that, uh, I did that as well three and a half years ago. So it's not about bailing whatsoever. Uh, in fact, if I was, I wouldn't be looking for a more difficult assignment. Let me ask this other question. Uh, do you, do you leave even with the least little bit of feeling that you're letting the community down and as many people in the community have said? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult process. Um, not putting that lightly. Personally, we're talking about packing a house, selling a house, uh, finding a place to live. Um, I, mean, I have a very young child, 16 months old. Um, so nothing in this is, is easy whatsoever. Uh, there's always a part of you that, that feels like you're doing that. Yes, transitions are never, never easy. When I was living in New York City to come to Rochester, it was, a great, it was a great opportunity. Even at that time, I had lots of work that was being done, and it was a sense of guilt leaving that behind. But again, everything I've done, even when I was a high school principal, I looked to build a team that could carry on the work forward. The work at Westinghouse High School continued well beyond my departure uh, in 2003 in New York. Um, same thing here. Again, the moment I walked in, we looked to build a team that could easily carry on the work that had to be done. Two amazing deputies, one is out of town, one is here. Either one could easily transition into the job. And, and to use your word, do you feel a sense of guilt here? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say that would not. Uh, but again, uh, my guilt is lessened because you build sustainability. When you know that the work has to be done across the neutral. When I walked in three and a half years ago, I was, I was clearly understanding this was about result. I quickly and work hard to try to dispel that and make sure it was about a team, not just the seven-member board, 
but the executive team who actually has to carry the work. I'm fortunate. I get to sit back and watch amazing people uh, do amazing work. Beth from the teaching and learning work. You know, you watch what, what uh, John C. Kenlin has done, what, what Tom Petronio has done, what, what uh, my legal team has done. I have an amazing legal team. And then what uh, Chuck Johnson has put together has been, has been quite wonderful. My philosophy is very simple. You hire very, very smart people and you get out of their way, which is what I've done. How, how yeah. much of this is, my final question for the moment, how, how much of this is wanting to work with somebody who is very close to President Obama? Um, you know, um, I would like to say that I didn't know who Roman Emanuel was. I mean, I think he's a terrific man. He's, he's a brilliant man. Uh, I think he'll do wonderful things for the city of, of Chicago. But that is not, and it has never been our focus. We don't look for a spotlight. Uh, we don't look to, to sort of uh, great, great, great famous, pe famous people. In fact, I have to get used to even being a media uh, sort of uh, magnet here in Rochester. I'm not used to that. I'm used to being the guy behind the scenes and making things happen. And what work I did in New York as well. Um, so this kind of stuff is not what I, what I pray for. Do you think the future work under the narrow control system to uh, work more under that the sooner you're going to be implementing some of the same reforms here in Chicago, it'll be easier to do. And part two, you can't anticipate taking any of your data. Well, part one is I'm going to be reporting to a seven member board in Chicago. Um, so there is a board of education in Chicago appointed by the mayor. Um, so that's in play. Um, I'm sure there'll be some, some differences in, in the two. Uh, but again, I've had five members here who have been very supportive, sometimes six, very supportive of what we've had to do. Um, I think I believe everything will push forward. Um, has actually been approved um, here in, in Rochester. So as long as the support exists, I think it can, it can happen either way. We'll have to do the same kind of convincing in Chicago for the reform that has to be done as well. In, in part two, I can't speak to what will happen uh, with the team. Um, I don't believe in, in, in gutting a place uh, to build uh, another place. I would love to see that the team remain in place and continue what has to be done. They've said to me uh, privately behind closed doors, if they have a reformer, if they have someone strong that comes in, they'll be happy to continue to work with this they've started. So they're going to watch and see that the right kind of leader actually come into play. Because people, they will interview their bosses the same way I interview my bosses coming into the city. Right? So but you said you were elected last year in Manchester. Did you get to the point where you felt you were not really effective anymore? No, uh, at all. I felt I was completely effective. In fact, uh, the vote that, that took place in fact gave me more resolve to try and prove that I am not a black teacher. My parents were teachers, I'm a teacher, my wife's a teacher. Uh, teachers make what happens in schools happen. And that label uh, really has been probably the most hurt for, for me as, as, as an educator. Uh, in fact, one of my colleagues across the country called me and said, you know, you're being painted as a black teacher. That was very hurtful. I am not. Uh, I've, I've always been pro teacher. So my, I have very good friends in America who are union leaders, teacher union leaders. Um, and in fact, for the mid calls for me in Chicago. But let me but let me, but let me, let me finish. Um, completely effective, but you also have to weigh the work versus the person. So you can get to a place where people are so distracted in terms of pushing on you, and so you, you become a symbol for something that it may not make sense. Uh, so I didn't say I got to a place where I could not be effective, but that concerns me. It concerns every leader. Don't want to be a block or barrier to what needs to be done. The greater good, we're talking about children and their future. That has to be the focus of everything we do. So you can't have one person or a team of people being in the way. We're talking about the livelihood and the health and welfare of a lot of young people. Would you say the Rochester Teachers Association, um, your relationship with them, was one of the reasons why you left? No, why you no. Again, if anything, it can sort of push my resolve to try and prove that we can make this work. When I worked in New York City for over two decades, I had a very good relationship with the UFT um, in New York City. Uh, I, I had two awards when we did white uh, when I was a principal and when I was in the high school division. The council was supervisors and ministers in New York City. Um, the president is still a very good friend. Uh, we talk maybe monthly. Um, and when I was in New York a few months ago, I had lunch with the UFT president. I had a very good working relationship with unions throughout my career. Um, so I've had a difficult one here with Dr. Robinsky, um, and it's not, it's not a secret. And I've tried, and we have tried, uh, to, to uh, bring resolution, perhaps, to our differences. 
I think I'll reform agenda. One he has espoused in the past and one I've been pushing are quite similar. Um, so I'm not sure where the personality issues have come into play, but one actually many in our business community, in our higher education community, I've worked with us in trying to resolve the differences. Most recently we had lunch with a CEO in town. Uh, in trying to have four of us talked to see what we can actually get uh, get to. So we've been working behind the scenes to get that done. Do you have any advice on your lightning rod status? Somewhat of a distraction. Uh, what advice would you offer to the uh, public to avoid that kind of status, to avoid being painted with this you know, brush that some of your colleagues have certainly You know, um, it's, it's one that many of us struggle with um, across the country. I have friends in other cities who face similar situations we've talked uh, about how to get around that. And I've talked to um, um, colleagues at Harvard, for instance, who know that they're basically quite well in trying to better understand the person and how to work uh, with Adam. About a year and a half, two years ago, in fact, I talked to someone who both know really well and asked for advice on how to best deal with that. And we've tried some of that. But I guess one of the things that I've done in the past, I tried to do here, maybe not successfully as, as, as much, is to get ahead of the issue and talking to them directly first. Uh, one of the things I did, and I think one huge lesson learned for me, three and a half years ago, I was meeting with teachers regularly. Uh, small groups of elementary, secondary, mid-level, um, arts, music, special ed, uh, etc. Uh, that structure was dismantled, uh, and we want to go into the reasons why. The structure, the meeting structure that we created was dismantled. We were making tremendous headway in, in connecting with teachers, because that really is important for me. I met with my principals one-on-one -on -one, um, for an hour, met, uh, meet with them uh, just about every single month. I tried to send them with my team. Uh, that fell apart, uh, and we had this huge audience of six, seven hundred teachers at the time, which did not work as well. We waited too long to reinstitute the coffee, tea, the small groups. We've been doing that for the past year, and have worked wonderfully. Uh, we should have never uh, allowed that structure, that connection, to actually be, be broken. Uh, so my advice would be to anyone to make sure they keep that and, and, and talk to people, because the way you change feelings is you talk about it. But how can they make a relationship with Adam Urbanski specifically moving forward, whoever does succeed you? You know, it's, it's a great question. I don't know perhaps if I'm the best person for that kind of advice. Um, but the one thing that I would urge anyone else to do is to find a mutual a point of connection with Adam Urbanski and make that happen. Um, I, I approached the folks at Harvard about a year ago um, when I was in Pittsburgh at a meeting, and that was the first beginning of our conversation. Uh, in trying to build, we build the bridge. But at that time, it may have gone too far in terms of the, perhaps some animosity, et cetera. Uh, Dr. Obensky is a brilliant man, he's very, very smart. Um, I believe he has the best interest of teachers in mind. Uh, I believe he really cares about the kids of the city. And, and, and I've said this to him, that I think we, we agree and believe in the same philosophy. Why there's been this personality issues, one, I don't think either one of us have been able to, to, to get to. But however, someone can do that ahead of time and build that relationship, make a strong foundation, uh, is what I would push uh, heavily. Now he has said time and time again that you weren't a perfect fit for the city school district. I didn't say that. No, he, no, I oh, yes, he, okay. he, he, he has said that yes. in the past to us. Who would be the perfect fit? Who could fit in here and you know stay a long term and make changes, do you think? Well, I, I believe I was a fantastic fit for, for, for Rochester. Uh, Dr. Obinsky himself talks about, uh, you know, if a school's not performing, they shouldn't stay open. He has said, he has said that, and I say the exact same thing. Um, so again, the philosophical approaches, uh, I believe, are very similar. In fact, one of the reasons I came to Rochester was because of Dr. Obinsky. Um, and, and I'll give him a lot of credit. The board approved my contract and, and, and recruited me. But I met him in August of 2007. Uh, myself and Ingrid Carney, who was my, my other uh, competitor, Ingrid is a good friend. Um, Dr. Obinsky is the one who convinced us to apply for the job here in Rochester. So he should take credit for it. Um, and, and again, I believe we were uh, in all the same page philosophically. Um, so I'm not sure why um, he has been saying that. Uh, but I think we align quite well in terms of how we approach the work of the school. Do you blame computer um, people? Your press release saying you joined Chicago's Freedom Friday and the PDF that you sent was not I didn't know the board was having a press conference on Friday. They announced it Thursday. I was.
was uh, the aspiration to the entire week. And no, we tried to contact you to find out where you stood. I did not see that. I believe uh, there was a reporter in town who told me that it was a Friday morning or late Thursday. I saw the email Friday morning. But I came from one of my um, one of the reporters in town. Yeah, I remember that was on Sunday. They were trying to call you, reach you, text you, and you were in the economy. And is that the well, problem with the truth now? I have to tell you that um, um, I'm not sure. Why? Ben this morning called me and said, I've been texting you. I said, Ben, I have no text message on my phone. So I'm not sure if he has uh, the wrong number, etc. I didn't get text. Um, Melissa texted me and texted back. We talked um, on email and via text. Like I said, I spoke to Malik in person. When, and when was um, two and a half weeks ago, Friday before last Friday, I forgot the exact dates. Um, again, didn't tell him where, but we talked about transitioning. Can you be effective leading this district with the budget? Means you can be planned to stay here for the budget. That was our discussion this morning, and I'll let Malik talk much more about much more about that. There is a negotiation taking place between the board's attorneys and my attorney in the transition out of Rochester. Um, I intend to be through the process, um, and um, again, as long as the board is willing to have me be part of that, I certainly will do that. But that is really up to the uh, Mr. Brizard, yes, Mr. Brizard, schools are all about getting grades. What grade would you give yourself in your work here? You know. Um, same question was asked by by uh, by you. I think it was a few few months ago. I'm going to refrain from doing that. I think we did extremely well. I think our record speaks for itself. Uh, it's hard to get a lot done in three less than three and a half years. As you know, this work does not happen in a short amount of time. It took decades, decades to get here. It will not take three years to fix this. Uh, we've done a tremendous amount of work. Uh, move the needle much faster than almost anyone else in America in this in this time span. When you look at the fact that New York City talks about, I think it's a 60, 17 point graduation uh, increases in eight years, we're talking about 11 points in three years. Um, that's a lot of work done. The closing of schools, um, the changing the curriculum that we put in play. Uh, so I'm not going to give myself a grade. I can tell you that I will. Well, well you want to you yes, want sir. to give teachers a grade. You want to evaluate no. teachers. So why are you reluctant to do to do it with yourself? I don't want to give teachers a grade. Um, there's a law being placed in New York State to evaluate teachers based on multiple criteria. And that is a law that we are following. It is not going to be a grade, it will be an effectiveness scale. And I, I, am, I am graded, sir, uh, by my board every single year. So I do get a rating from them that is based on the student achievement and qualitative measures. That was designed, I believe, when Cindy Ali was in charge of the uh, uh, governance, uh, governance committee design the evaluation process. So I am rated every single year by the Board of Education. Ron Emanuel is noted as a group manager. What in your contract has allowed them or allows him to evaluate you as perhaps as rudely as you evaluate teachers here in uh, Rochester and New York? Well, first of all, I don't know if you evaluate teachers brutally um, in Rochester. So let me answer the question two ways, right? One is that no one is looking to put one uh, measure for teacher evaluations in New York or in Rochester. Multiple criteria. Any good educator will tell you that. That one measure is, is, not, is not sufficient in terms of measuring someone's effectiveness. Lots has to be put in play. In fact, we're talking about 60% of the evaluation being qualitative, not quantitative. So that's clear uh, in, in looking at that. Uh, and that qualitative measure has to be negotiated with the RTA, and we've been in discussions trying to see what that will look like. Um, so no one is talking about making high stakes exam the only criteria. That's clear. The other piece about Chicago, I will not, not going to get into my contract that is being discussed as we speak. I will leave that once we are, I am confirmed by the Board of Education in, in Chicago. Mr. Rizard, what about the cost of uh, looking for a new superintendent? I know there's some contract negotiations with you exiting. Can you tell us whether or not you are amenable to helping pay for the search for your replacement? Well, you know, this is the way the process works. Um, you know, people leave jobs uh, all of the time. And unfortunately, it happens way too often in urban education with superintendents. Um, the cost of my contract is quite clear. Uh, the lawyer is supposed to figure this out. Um, I don't expect that will come to fruition. Um, but I do understand the costs associated. Again, like I've said, and I said this to my board chair this morning, we have two amazing deputies in the district who can easily assume the position. 
Um, so there need not be a cost associated um, in the process. But I do understand the, 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 perhaps the driver wants to see what else exists outside of the district, within the community, within the county, or within New York, or within the country. Uh, you want the best practice to be here. Uh, but again, if the board uh, so chooses, do not have to uh, incur costs in trying to make a better replacement. Yes, sir. Do you think you'll be a fantastic fit for Chicago? Okay. Uh, I would not have engaged in that process if I didn't think I could be. Uh, tell me, what, what, why do you think this? What, what reasons would you? Well, I'm, I'm quite you? used to very large organs. I worked in New York City for over two decades uh, in a system of one, one million plus students. Um, my last district when I was a regional super had 101,000 students. So I'm used to the mega scale of the work. I'm used to understanding how you move a battleship uh, and turn it around uh, quite effectively. And what just the the ways is, 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 is very it's a record. I mean, it looks very much like in terms of its demographic and issues. Uh, lots of similarities between Rochester and Chicago. But that said, you know, my entire career, uh, my spent career was, was spent in New York City. I'm quite used uh, to the amount of work that has to be done. Uh, I think Chicago is poised to make um, wonderful gains, uh, lots of talent, um, and, and a governance and a mayor um, who is very interested uh, in making things happen, and the Board of Education as well who will look to push that and make it happen as well. Presumably there will be some pain as well. Say again? There will be some pain involved. Oh, yes. Simply. You know, change is always uncomfortable. Um, you know, none of us like it. Right now, just the change of moving and selling a house and back in my family uh, is quite stressful. Um, so, you know, change is never a comfortable thing uh, for people, uh, but you cannot have progress without change, things that could be uh, moving and changing. But lots of wonderful work has been done uh, by Arnie Duncan and others, uh, Ronnie Bruin in Chicago, that we're going to build on. And, and from what I've seen in the past two and a half days uh, in Chicago, uh, there's a community built a poise, just like here really wanting to, to make things happen. One who really understand, like Rochester, like Chicago, one who really understand that schools are the foundation of a success for a city. Well, you mentioned earlier that there's a large number of people in Rochester, educators, and activists, and so on. They really want to swing back in the other direction. Can you give us some kind of idea of what you think might happen or what should happen? I'm not sure what you mean by swinging back. No, 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 for example, Dr. Callow, who's your predecessor, has been at times quite vocal about this going in a lot of direction. And there's a number of people who feel that attitude. And you mentioned that Rochester is going towards these reforms. I just wondered, you know, what you think should happen at this point. When you say it's been important, do you understand that? Well, um, We've given um, uh, the board chair the transition plan that outlines the work we've been on. Because somebody is quite aware of what we've been doing. The people who are in place who can continue that kind of, kind of work. Um, Dr. Cowell and I um, at times disagree on approaches. But philosophically, in terms of what we want, I think it's exactly the same. Um, there are some who are anti-testing people, uh, who believe that we're over-testing um, kids across this country. Um, I don't believe you need to have one or the other, you can have both. When you look at the school that Beth and Sunday Miller created, the World of Inquiry School, constructivist um, school, real sort of uh, approach around um, building work organically uh, from the child, child focus, yet has one of the highest test, test scores in the city of Rochester. Blue Ribbon School, um, so recognized nationally, it's one of the best schools in the country. School 19, the exact same thing. So if you start one or the other, it's not either or conversation, it's both. You can get the test scores if you focus on making sure you teach well and you have your lead well. Um, so it's not one or the other. What I mean by tipping point very simply is that the, the systems that we put in play around curriculum, around assessment, around, around intervention, around building a portfolio of great schools, the new schools we put in place, a new college high school, uh, you're going to begin to read the, the results quite quickly. One of the schools that was created a while, a while back, uh, um, uh, Northwest College Prep, um, will have a graduation rate near 80%. Uh, before I got here, only one school had a graduation rate above 60%, and that was School of the Arts. You'll see at least five, if not more, when the numbers come out for the class of 2010. So that number is increasing, and the schools we've created, a little bit this past fall, when they, when they, have, their, when they have their first graduation, uh, you're going to see those numbers beginning. So lots of people put in play. 
um, to actually move our single voice quite, quite quickly. But we also made it clear that it's not just about high school graduation, which is about numbers, but about culture. Uh, if you walk this building, you see a different structure, a different attitude, a different atmosphere, a real professional environment um, in central office. Um, you have a, a, in John Skilling and, 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 and um, Jerome Underwood, and in Jim Fenton, people who are um, Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma experts who brought a new level of efficiency to the system. I mean, you remember David you and Jada when we had those, those books in the warehouse. We're tossing our seven tractor trailer books in the garbage every single year. We've not done that uh, in three years, but we've changed processes. So when you look at the culture, the systems we've put in place, what Chuck Johnson has done around putting regulations and new policies with the help of the Board of Education, not just in health and wellness, Talk about simple policies and procedures, uh, bringing a level of, of, of alignment to what people you know, describing the processes that we have to follow, all that has been, has been put in play. It, what has been done around youth and family development, um, a new parent council, all of that has been, has been put in place. So dismantling it, I think, is going to be very difficult uh, to actually make. So the typical point is there, the vast majority of this community, uh, perhaps a solid majority, because we didn't hear from the vocal minority. Uh, too often. The, the silent majority, and, and you're talking to the city council, uh, our new mayor, our last mayor, our interim mayor, uh, you're talking to the business community, the, the black churches, uh, the, the higher education folks. Um, you hear the support, the emails, 800 emails in my inbox, all talking about making, wanting to make sure the work continues. So it's not just a matter of sensing it, but you hear it, that people want this to actually continue, and I'm sure it will. Well, I'll talk to some because uh, my wife is quite comfortable talking to myself. Sure, I Yes, one of the Yes, you're not. One of the people I know, by the way. Um, Brooks Charter School is 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 is, you know, uh, is aligned to a network of schools that are is in New York City, in Philadelphia, in Austin, Chicago, in Baltimore City. So it's not just one person, but a network of schools. That is uh, put together by Entish um, from New York. Um, she's put together an amazing board uh, to oversee the school. Uh, and this board is one of the smartest people I've seen, uh, I've met in the city of Rochester, who made a commitment to making sure that that work continues. Plus, she has a partner in the world. It's not just her, it's Laura Bell uh, uh, Gross. Uh, Laura, by the way, is, is Michael Rebell's daughter. You made a Michael Rebell in the CFE. Um, uh, lawsuit. So two powerful women uh, with a powerful work behind them were creating an amazing school for young girls in the city. So the work will continue uh, and work will stay uh, connected uh, to the work, especially in its formative, uh, formative years. Excuse me, what you say about support from the community, I think that's simply completely untrue. Um, if there's so much support from the community, why did 120 people speak against you at the last board meeting, which you weren't even at to witness? Well, it wasn't because of a uh, budget hearing. I don't believe they were speaking against me. They were uh, pushing on the budget piece. I wasn't here to listen to what they had to say. I can easily show you 10 times the amount of people who are pushing <coughs> for these reforms or supporting the work that we are doing. So it's not just the, uh, again, I don't know what 120 said, but I can clearly show you. Um, tremendous amount of folks who want this to happen uh, through letters and emails I received in the past week. Any reporters who haven't had a chance to ask a question yet? Mr. Mr. Brazard, question for you. You mentioned that you were good for Rochester and that change is not easy. What have you learned from your time here and in going to Chicago because apparently times are going to get tough as well. Yes. What have you learned and what do you plan on trying differently or would you carry over that system? You know, um, Every, every, every opportunity is a learning experience. As a teacher, I have to tell you, you look for that. Everything um, is a learning experience. One had to learn a lot about being the face of the reform effort. In New York, Joel Klein was the face of the reform. He certainly engaged the media, but not to this level. So this that was one thing I had to I learn quite well, uh, thanks to you all um, in, in Rochester. The other piece, too, is that coming in, we heard a lot from the media and other folks in the community about external communication. And I think we corrected quite a bit of that by being and engaging the outside community as well as the media. Um, I, I believe in communication, but the one thing I know we could have done better is the internal communication piece. Uh, we've had town hall meetings in central office um, as often as we can. 
Um, like I said earlier on, we were meeting with teachers. That was very important to me initially. Allowing that to disappear for a short amount of time, um, I think is, is a lesson of not to let that go whatsoever. And to fight to keep it. Uh, we had it. Uh, we're doing really, really well. Uh, we're making sure we're connected to the folks who actually do the work every single day. To allow that to dissipate midstream uh, was a mistake and one I will not let anyone not forget. I have colleagues um, across the country, uh, I said the same thing too. Uh, I know some of them are not doing it whatsoever. And of course, in Chicago, it will be much more difficult to get um, to the rank and file, uh, but one will have to strive to get to by different kinds of communication needs. But staying connected um, to the people who matter most, the principals and teachers in the classroom is something that, that is critically important. What I knew coming in, but we sort of understood and heard from the community that the external piece was critical. There were too many hidden things in the district. We try to be transparent. And, and what, I'm, what I'm at that is interesting because as you become more and more transparent, you're accused of not being transparent because people begin to learn what they didn't know existed. One of the first things we did was to change the budget process to make every school budget transparent so people can see to see the inequities uh, across schools. What we were hoping for was a, a ground school of anger to push us to a much more equitable system. <coughs> so that um, um, is something that, that we know we had to do. We knew uh, it would get, uh, we would get the accused of not being transparent as we got more and more transparent, but it's a much greater level of transparency. But two lessons learned. One, engaging um, with you all in the media um, and being a face and accepting it. Um, going to a restaurant and, and Talking to people all the way to your table. Uh, and, you know, in New York, it was pretty anonymous, um, more or less. Um, and the second one is not to let go ever of the internal communication piece. Does this move set you up given Ron Emanuel's uh, relationship with the president for a possible you know, nomination for education secretary? Should the president be reelected? You know, um, I should tell someone that I was very happy being an assistant principal. Um, when I was in an AP at Westinghouse High School in Brooklyn, I was the operations guy. I took my physics class every single day. I taught my, my lab every Friday morning. Uh, I was I was happy. Um, I love I love uh, being behind the scenes, getting things done. So this has never been about uh, uh, career advancement. And let me say honestly that I have applied for very few jobs in my life. Uh, I applied for a job of teacher, and I applied for this job here in Rochester at the urging of colleagues and, and of course Dr. Robinsky. Uh, but I have, I've never applied. Um, this, this position from Chicago came to me. The same way in New York, I was offered positions over and over again. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to say I'm not ambitious. Everyone wants to be ambitious. I work hard. Um, for me, it is about the work, um, not about money, and certainly not about uh, looking to see what is, what, what, is, what is next. I am not a serial superintendent. I really am not. Mr. Brizard, what, what um, are you doing to prepare yourself for the inevitable fight to happen in Chicago with the union teachers, parents, who are against your privatization schemes? Well, first of all, I, I don't um, believe in a privatization scheme. I know people have used that expression. Um, charter schools are not private schools, they are public schools. I believe in good schools, no matter who creates them. I've always seen myself as perhaps the superintendent of all the kids in the city of Rochester, not the city school district. Does that make sense? Um, so important for me to find great seats. If we are struggling in creating wonderful seats around a particular grade span, and someone else can come and do that, why not support it? You take a look at Rochester Prep, an uncommon school here in the city. I didn't create it. They, if you look at test scores as the measure, and we all can talk about how you measure the quality of schools, right? If you look at test scores as the measure, they outperform every single school in the county, not the city, the county. No matter what the wealth, they are number one in the LA math schools. They are beating the most affluent schools in the county. If you have parents, 2,000 of them, who are saying to us, this is what they want, who are we to say we shouldn't give them that right? As a middle class parent, I have a choice. When I send my kids, I could move to the suburbs, right? Uh, my daughter, who lives with my ex-wife on Long Island, lives, goes to a public school in the suburbs of Long Island. When I was getting divorced, I begged and pushed to move into other neighborhoods. And I said, you know, please, uh, I know you love her, I love her as much, I want to get a quality education. So when you have poor parents in our city who don't have the means to be able to pack up and leave, or to choose something else, 
how can you not support choice? <laughs> okay, not talking about privatization. I'm not a big fan of, of vouchers for one reason, one reason only. Vouchers do not pay the entire tuition of another school. Then what you do is put a poor parent at a great disadvantage. But what are they up? A regular public school, a public charter school, uh, and an independent school, right? If you're creating quality seats for kids, then why should we say no? But it is about fixing a system and putting together a portfolio addressing the needs of all kids. It's not about closing regular public district schools to open charters. It's about the charters are one solution, not the solution. They're not a panacea. If you look across the country, you can find lousy charter schools, you can find great charter schools. The vetting process has to be rigorous, and it is in New York. So I support great schools no matter who creates them, not in the privatization. You're gonna miss me. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I have two questions. Um, I had some foil stuff over the weekend. Um, you have repeatedly said you have any more employees this year. The SCG group. Three years. Well, the information that I have showed that you did in last year, and you did again this this time from April to April. There were four people in, your, in the SCG group as not employees. You got raises. Rashawn Jackson is one of them. Went from ninety eight thousand to one sixteen. How, how do you explain that? In case you're public around. So I think what you're looking at, people are changing titles, not getting raises. So if someone goes from teacher to assistant principal, they get a raise. Well, sure that believe went from one level of attorney to a different level of attorney. Um, so we have tiers, the same way you have... Secretary set tiers too? Um, yes, within Bente, within ASAR, within SCG. So if someone moves from one level to another, and it is, it is part of the process, not raises. My team, the only folks in, in, in the district who have not gotten a raise, uh, in two years, we'll not get one come this July. I also got some important report information that showed the district spent about $25,000 on a place on the staff in the public house. What was that for? I'm, not, here? I'm not familiar with that is, honestly. I don't know what they retreat out of houses. I don't know, I don't know what it is and where it is, honestly. I've never heard of it, honestly. Nice question. Very yes. good. Very good. Um, uh, there's a press conference right after this. Uh, uh, stakeholders and the local education Urban and, um, as I understand, it, uh, you know, call for having more of a say in the selection of the next superintendent. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Is it, is it practical um, to, to have um, a, a large group of people, a large community, um, select the superintendent? And you know, how would you advise the, the district and the board to proceed in engaging those people uh, in their selection? You know, that, that's a decision for the board um, to make, actually. Uh, when they put me through the public process, when they had the finals, it was a good process. Uh, I think certainly I think the voice uh, has to be heard. Um, how they do that leads up to what I'm going to speak for, uh, for the league. I was hoping I could, he would be here to talk about the transition, but I believe we'll do that afterwards. Uh, we had a long discussion this morning, but that really is his um, is decision and was decision. Randy, did you have a question, Randy? Randy Gorman. Oh, very frivolous question, but who came up with JC? Was it Rahm Emanuel? Have they ever called you that before? You know, it's, it's, it's a great one. It, well, um, and what I've been trying to, um, um, uh, actually, they never the bought me. They tell people they're powerful emissions, you know? Um, and uh, I say, we don't confuse that with the other person. I'm, I'm Catholic. <laughs> um, but um, when I was in college, a professor said, Jean Claude is still only for your JC. And I stuck. Uh, for years. Uh, when I got to Rochester, we used to jump up, which is my name, which I prefer, honestly. Uh, but Joel Klein still calls me JC. He goes, he goes you're not born up. You're still my JC. We call you JC. Uh, Dennis Walcott, Deputy Mayor of New York, who's now the new Chancellor, calls me JC. One will call me JC. Uh, I'm fine with it. Um, but if I'm asking, can you prefer I prefer Jean Claude. It's my name. Uh, but JC is, is fine because I guess the connection to the I guess all my needs also. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.